Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Welcome to this special service, which is a day of reflection for what we've all been through over the last year or so. Since the first lockdown began in 2020, hundreds of thousands of people have died. Too many lives are being cut short and millions have been bereaved. Behind the statistics and whatever the cause, every death has been devastating for the people left behind. Today we reflect on our collective loss, support those who've been bereaved and hope for a brighter future. now having a time of confession where we bring before God all the things that we've done wrong and people have done wrong to us in the last week. We come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden to ask for his forgiveness and peace. Christ came in humility to share our lives. Forgive our pride. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ came with good news for all people. Forgive our silence. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ came in love to a world of suffering. Forgive our self-centeredness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offences for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Amen. We now have our collect prayer, which is our special prayer for this service. Let's take a moment to collect all of our thoughts and our prayers, our hopes and our dreams before our loving God in heaven, in a moment of silence. Loving God, as we journey towards Easter, help us to live as people of hope, knowing that beyond the pain of the cross lies the joy of resurrection. Be with those who are struggling in mind, body or spirit. Help each of us to keep our eyes fixed on you, that we may reflect your light to all whom we meet, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
This poem is called Lockdown Easter 2020. It's just a pause, not an end, nor a beginning, rather an advent, an expectation of something new to come. Creation breathes freely, unhindered by polluted air or ravaged by consuming humans. We find time again, choices on what to do, who to contact, friends to cheer up or commiserate with, neighbours to befriend with a two metre wave, banging Thursday saucepans relieved frustrations and applauds our key workers, lives placed on the front line. Jesus is our front line key worker. Had no PPE, no mask or sanitizer, no political directives, yet heavenly objectives. An urge to go forward, self-isolate on the cross, to relinquish mankind from their bonds and chains, to set them free. Is he doing it again this Easter? A reading from St Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbours, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. And do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing, rather than let them labour and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you are marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God, as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or be baptised with the baptism that I am baptised with? They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the t 10 heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognise as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. 
For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's pray. May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So today we are taking part in the day of reflection, which actually falls on Tuesday to mark one year since the first lockdown started. And it's been a very odd time. It will have been different for each of us. Things which some people have found difficult, others will have found a benefit. And it is a time to look back and think about those things that we have lost. Those things which we now recognise were important and which we perhaps did not recognise before. And so I invite you to reflect, to think about what it is that you have lost. It might be very easy. Some people have been unfortunate enough to have lost family members who have died either because of the pandemic or otherwise, but whom they've been unable to mourn properly. Others will perhaps have been fortunate that this hasn't been the case. Some people will have missed seeing family. There is, in my case, a grandson I haven't yet met. There may also be a feeling of guilt because whilst most people talk about the way in which they've suffered, perhaps you are one of those who has found some kind of release, a removal of pressure to conform, pressure to do something don't know what it might be. There may be children who perhaps are bullied at school for whom the absence of school has been an absolute godsend. There may be children who are being abused at home for whom the absence of school is the absolute opposite. None of us can know what it is that each other have suffered and have missed. But it is a time to take stock and to reflect on that. And to recognise the truth of where it is that each of us are. You may want to ask, where is God in this? The truth is, this is an area that the church has wrestled with for years and years and years. At the time of the tsunami in 
think it was just late 2004 or five, the press had an article saying that it made Rowan Williams, who was then Archbishop of Canterbury, lose his faith in God. That wasn't actually what he said. What he said was that it might cause some people to lose their faith in God. Over the years, when the church has looked at the problem of evil, with evil being uh, both the acts of people, but also natural disaster, and I think at this stage we don't know quite which the pandemic is, the answer of where is God in this has been a difficult one to answer. The church is very clear that God is not sending the pandemic as some form of punishment. Instead, we know that God can be found in the good things that come out of it, which isn't to say that God sent it so that the good things could come out. It is more that God created something new out of something bad which was there. And that is where we can take our hope. If we look at the good things that have come out of the pandemic, if we look at the recreation of community, if we look at the way in which people volunteered, people stepped up to help each other, the society stopped becoming as perhaps selfish as it had been and started looking out for those who were in greater need. And as we get through the vaccination role, and as the situation changes, there can at this point be hope for a better future. We will not go back to the way it was before, even if we want to. But we have the opportunity to shape the future differently from the past. So I now invite you just to spend a few seconds thinking about what your hopes for the future are. Perhaps more homeworking, perhaps less. Perhaps fewer Zoom meetings, but perhaps fewer in-person meetings a long way away from where you are. Whatever. What hopes do you have? as society builds back after the lockdown finishes. We have a God who loves us. And that gives us hope for the future. Amen. We now have our profession of faith where we say what we believe as a community. We believe in God the Father, from whom, whom every family, family in, in heaven, heaven and, and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen.
we now have a prayer of intercession where we bring our community prayers to our loving Father in heaven. Lord, on this day of reflection, we bring to you all our thoughts, memories and worries. We remember especially today those who have lost loved ones through coronavirus, those who have been able, unable to be with them in their last hours and who could not have the comfort of friends and family at their funeral. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember those who have suffered and are still suffering from COVID-19. Those who have been in hospital for weeks without any visitors to support them. And we remember their families and friends, the stress and trauma they have endured being separated from their loved one. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all the nations of the world as they battle the virus that has completely changed lives. We pray for all leaders who are seeking a way to beat the virus and restore some sort of normality. Give them your wisdom, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have lost their jobs or been furloughed, for those who are suffering financially, anxious about the future and what will happen. We pray for families where relationships are strained, where children are worried about the schooling they've missed and whether they'll be able to catch up. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who have had to isolate for a year, especially those who have been alone, missing their families and friends and physical contact. We remember those whose mental health has been affected and those who have other illnesses that have not been treated and are suffering. We pray especially for those known personally to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for all the staff of the NHS who have gone above and beyond this year. For nurses, doctors, physios, pharmacists, radiologists, cleaners, porters, everyone who has worked tirelessly to care for the sick and dying. We thank you for the scientists who have developed and produced vaccines that will finally help us to return to normal life and for those working so hard to ensure that we all receive those vaccines. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we thank you for the beauty of your world 
which has been so important to us this year. For the bird song, the spring flowers and the sun, all the things that remind us that you are with us, loving us and giving us the strength and courage we need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. Now we have the peace, where we remember to have peace with each other and peace with all people. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Oh 
Now we have the blessing where the priest pronounces God's blessing on the people. The Lord bless you, keep you safe and defend you, that you may persevere always in God's love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.